Hey everybody, today I want to bring to you um, uh, an update video, another low budget character guide that um, I happen to pull off in Nemesis. Um, and this is a standard spectral throw scion, which is probably most of you will say the most boring and standard thing to do, but actually it is a lot of fun still, even this, even after uh, spectral throw was the flavor of the month after release. Um, and especially because you can pull this off with uh, no uh, money, no currency at all. So you can play this character as your first character when you're starting with Path of Exile or when the new leagues start. So if you haven't decided what to play uh, in the um, um, Sacrifice of the Val mini expansion on 5th of March, this character might be one to go for. So, um, Low budget, uh, of course, doesn't mean no budget, so this is not a cell phone character. I have been trading for some gear and it's actually uh, necessary and it's also fun to uh, to acquire some stuff that makes this uh, character extra powerful. I'm not using any uniques, this is just standard rare equipment and uh, also the passive tree that uh, I will talk about um, a little bit later is, uh, is not that uh, fancy. It's pretty straightforward uh, stuff uh, with high defensive, um, with a high defensive spec, uh, which, which helps you to keep uh, to stay alive in a hardcore league. Um, how does it play? Um, in terms of auras, I'm using at the moment. I'm using clarity uh, at level six, so not really much. Hatred to convert physical damage or add physical damage uh, as cold damage based on of my uh, physical damage and Grace together with Iron Reflexes to convert this to armor uh, which gives me a nice base armor of uh, roughly 6000 then I'm using uh, Molten Shell with uh, faster casting in dangerous situations to bring it up to 7k and then if I pop my granite it's 18k armor, which is uh, not uber powerful. So I've seen characters with uh, 30k armor, but uh, it helps to mitigate most most hits. And as uh, offensive uh, curse, I'm using projectile weakness with adds, uh, which multiplies the physical damage or the projectile damage uh, at this stage by 27%. So it's a ridiculous amount of. Uh, of, da of more damage that you do. And um, the, the curse I'm going for, projectile weakness, makes this character more a solo character than a, um, a, s a solid party contributor. Uh, just because if your other party members aren't archers or um, playing some spectral throw spec of, of another sort, uh, projectile weakness won't be very useful for them. So most parties uh, like it more uh, if you're using e either elemental weakness or critical weakness. So, but as far as soloing goes, projectile weakness awesome curse for this character. If things get too uh, difficult, I also have an enfeeble. So if I'm facing a difficult boss or a difficult rare. Um, this curse also helps me to stay alive in uh, dangerous situations. And for my main attack, uh, for my, my main AoE attack, it's Spectral Throw, linked with uh, added fire damage, life gain on hit, lesser multiple projectiles, physical projectile attack damage. Um, why did I do that? Let me just quickly jump to town and go over to my spreadsheet here. Um, I was thinking what synergizes best with um, the damage increases I've gone with, which is added fire and hatred. Both uh, hatred, the aura, and added fire, the gem, scale your damage based off your um, physical damage. So they don't add flat damage like added cold and added lightning, anger and wrath do. Um, they are more powerful the higher your base physical damage is. And I was thinking how can I scale this even more with my fifth um, socket in my weapon. Uh, I was thinking either going weapon elemental damage or physical projectile attack damage uh, that has been added to the game um, 
recently and although uh, most people prefer weapon elemental damage for this spec physical projectile attack damage is better if you have a weapon that does high physical damage you lose a little bit of attack speed but uh, the outcoming damage is higher uh, this is why I, um, I, w I went uh, this way um, the weapon I got is uh, the only one I have to trade for um, that was a bit, little bit more expensive I paid uh, 11 chaos um, for this weapon uh, it was already 20 quality the, the uh, mods are okay it's not uh, an uber weapon you can get a weapon that has like 300 physical up to 400 physical damage but those are like one and a half exalts and I don't uh, consider that as low budget anymore as the other uh, of the rest of the gear goes, uh, this is just basic stuff that has life and resist, nothing else that is too fancy. So life and resist here, life and resist here, life and resist and movement speed in the boots, life and resist here, life and resist here. The rolls are all mediocre, so all of this gear can be better, but uh, this is what you can get for one chaos or two chaos if you if you don't find items like this for yourself. The only thing that I still have to upgrade uh, is my jewelry. As you can see, I'm uh, still at 3.7 life roughly, which is a little bit low for level 7 to 3. This could be much higher, and this is because of my jewelry. Um, again, the jewelry, I bought every piece for one chaos, and um, the rings don't have life on it. The amulet has some life, but uh, it's not, not the best life roll. So there's some room for improvement. Um, in terms of flasks, I have a pretty good setup for myself, uh, so I have uh, Dispels Frozen and Chilled, uh, Surgeon's Life Flask, uh, Hallowed Life Flask that I use whenever I need a long duration heal and also uh, if it happens that I, I get frozen I pop that. I have the, um, a Perpetual Hallowed Life Flask of Staunching against Corrupting Blood Mobs and Dominus with increased charge recovery. It's uh, perfect, I have always two charges uh, minimum so I can deal with corrupting blood. Um, then my panic flask is a uh, bubbling uh, hell of craving so I have some um, mana leech there which I absolutely don't need. Uh, the only thing, I, the only reason I have that is because of the bubbling prefix. Then I have the perpetual granite flask of iron skin with increased charge recovery and 80% uh, increased armor. It's not the best roll of course but uh, still a pretty good um, uh, armor increase in that. And uh, the last one is a perpetual quicksilver of warding, which gives me six, seven, uh, six seconds of curse immunity, which is perfect and absolutely um, it, it, it's enough uh, if you're fighting hexfront mobs or if you um, get cursed uh, by um, some uh, necromancers or something and things become dangerous, then um, I pop that and uh, those six second duration is enough to keep me alive through the fight. For single target, I'm currently using, uh, uh, this is the thing that's not optimal for this build, it's a double strike linked with uh, multi strike and uh, you see that the single target DPS 3000 is a little bit low. Um, eventually if I manage to get a second 5 link and uh, get my link sorted out, uh, I want to have a second spectral throw in there with uh, slower projectiles, added projectile uh, damage, life leech and probably faster attacks. Um, this way my single target will be much more effective. Um, and last thing for defensive, uh, in terms of defensiveness I'm using on my cast on damage taken setup, uh, I'm using Immortal Call with increased duration. So basically whenever I encounter a mob I, I'm casting Enduring Cry and if I uh, take some damage then it will activate and with three endurance charges I get almost four seconds of um, physical immunity which is crazy good so this keeps me alive in maps and it's uh, and in very dangerous situations if I uh, don't have endurance charges uh, and uh, it activates I know okay I'm in danger now I can pop my granite I can activate my molten shell and I can um, 
survive the next one or two seconds, which is everything I need to activate my Enduring Cry, which gives me uh, three Endurance Charges, and then after those two or three seconds are over, the Immortal Call uh, triggers again and I, I survive the fight. Um, Custom damage taken is, a level, is level 11, so it requires me to take 1300 damage, which seems high, but um, as you can see while, uh, while playing this, it's, it's, it triggers quite frequently. And the fact that I'm um, always firing my spectral throw, any damage that I take during that fight is automatically gained by life gain on hit, which again also shows pretty nicely how effective life gain on hit is uh, with spectral throw versus life leech because with life gain on hit and spectral throw since you're hitting so many enemies with just one attack and that you can move while you're firing so you can basically cover the whole screen move around and while you're moving around you will hit mobs which will uh, give you life back instantly and this is automatically reflect immunity. You have no problems whatsoever with reflect, which is absolutely insane. Okay, so much for that. The last thing I wanted to show is uh, the passive tree. So let's go over here. So I've branched out in basically every direction except Ranger Marauder and uh, Templar. I started with getting life regen, um, went, went down to the huge life wheel, continued into the duelist area, getting more life, life regen, went down here, get life regen here. And uh, with this I had in the very early levels, I have my 4.7% um, life regen and this is awesome. You basically don't need flask during fights because your life heals up so quickly. It's, it's amazing. It, it's, it plays really comfortable. After that I went over to uh, Iron Reflexes to convert any evasion rating to armor, got some mana, got um, the acceleration and the leather and steel notes there. And after I did that I went into the um, Witch Shadow area to get uh, mana and life, more life here and went down to get life here and a little bit of attack speed which is basically the only offensive note I have in this build. Then I got more mana here and then started to pick up all the aura reduction and aura effectiveness notes, effectiveness notes uh, those three here, those two here and the really strong cluster with influence here which allows you to run two 60% uh, uh, auras and clarity on top of that and giving you more DPS and more mana regen because of influence. And um, after I did that, uh, I was about level 70 and um, what I'm doing now is traveling up this tree here. Next plan is to get those mana and life nodes here and the final end game version of that is traveling up here, getting more life here and finally static blows. And this is where the build becomes non-low budget. If I am at this point, uh, which I don't know if I managed that um, in the next week while Nemesis still runs, uh, I will try to acquire a six link and add. Um, uh, it depends. I might add added lightning to it if I don't have lightning damage in my uh, in my uh, items anywhere else. But if I manage to get some lightning damage, I will go for elemental proliferation, and then I will just uh, shock proliferate the whole screen, and things and things will die even faster. So that's about it. It's a really fun build. I hope you. Um, you get some ideas out of it and um, yeah I will link the build and uh, some notes in the description below and feel free to comment that ask questions and I hope to see you in game <laughs>